Good morning everyone and welcome to the house of the Lord. We've gathered here to praise him, to give him thanks because there's so much to be grateful for. And today we give thanks to God for a week that's gone by and in faith we praise him for a week that lies ahead. Amen. Let's rise to our feet and worship the Lord this morning. Thank you Lord. Father God, we've gathered here today to honor you. You are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, God of glory, the one and true living God. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. You have risen from the dead and you are seated at the right hand of the Father. We praise you, Holy Spirit, that you are within us and with us. Thank you, Father, that we hear your voice and we follow you, Master. And today, you as the shepherd of our souls, we stand in your presence to worship you. For you alone are worthy, Lord. You alone are worthy of every praise and glory and honor. And we glorify your name in this place, Lord. Pray that thou would be exalted in our midst this morning. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. How many of us believe that our God is a great God? He is a mighty one. And because of Him, we stand here today. Because of Him, we breathe every second. Because of Him, we are who we are today. And He has chosen us to be part of His kingdom. He has made us not to just merely live on this planet, but in every second of our lives, to remember to give him glory, honor, and worship his, his name. That is why we are here. And as we go into this time of praise and worship, let us keep our complete focus upon our Heavenly Father, the Mighty One, our Deliverer, our Savior. He is everything to us. In these moments, with whatever songs we are singing, let it be something that we can meditate on for this coming week. In whatever we do, that we worship, praise Him, and give Him glory for everything that He is to us. He's created everything. 
Jesus for everything that you are for us we worship you Lord because you are above everything and you are our most high we place you in the highest place Lord Jesus Praises lifted on high. Hear the 
Lord Jesus, with all our heart, <coughs> with all our soul, with all our heart, Master. Oh 
Jesus, who deserves all this glory, who deserves all the worship, because you are the true living God in whom we believe. We lift your name on high, Master. There is no one like you, Lord Jesus. There is nothing that can compare, Lord, to you do anything that you do Lord Jesus nothing on this earth can fathom your greatness what a powerful God we serve there is none like you let's lift our hands and sing no one else can touch my heart like you do Search for all eternity long. In fact, there is no like you. Your mercy flows like a river. Healing comes from your hand. Suffering children.
Too. 
Continue to work in our lives, Lord. That everything we do, everything we say and think, come from you, Lord Jesus. Help us and remind us, Lord, that every second we need to give you glory. We need to give you honor. We need to worship you, Master. That is why we are here today. That is why you have created us, Lord Jesus. To glorify your name. Help us draw closer to you, Lord. Let our worship be from our heart. Let our worship continue to pour out for our mighty God every day of our lives. Lord, we thank you, Master, for this time and for your presence here today. We bless the word that is going to be spoken, Master. Let it touch us. Let it touch anyone listening to it. Let them understand that our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, the only true living God, is to be worshipped. Summit everything into you, Lord Jesus. In your precious, matchless, mighty and holy name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll receive the tithes and the offerings. But 
Father God, we thank you for your provision in our life. You are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. We humbly bow before you and acknowledge every blessing we have in our life has come from your hands. We give to you out of love from what you have blessed us with. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. To remind us that the VBS starts on the 29th of this month and goes on through the 3rd of April. That's from Monday to Friday. So please register your children early. Uh, as usual, every year they have a wonderful time. And as usual, every year we also need volunteers. So if you'd uh, like to volunteer to come and help with the children for the VBS, the Vacation Bible School, uh, then call the office and please register. Today we begin a new series on worship. And uh, of all the kinds of people that the Lord is looking for, the Bible tells us that He is looking for those who would be worshippers. In John chapter 4 and verse 24, the Bible says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There are a lot of things we misunderstand when we read the Bible. And that's why the Bible must always interpret the Bible. One verse of the Bible must inter interpret the next verse of what you're trying to say, right? That, that line of thought must continue in the same direction. For example, when we say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We think it's to cower in fear. It's to say, no, God is in the church, so I've got to take off my shoes and, you know, that kind of fear. No, that word fear means reverence for God. Reverence. What is another word for reverence? It is respect. Respect is the foundation for love. You cannot love somebody that you don't respect. So, you know, I, I remember once when I was in Bible college, somebody made a point, and this is where I say is we can sometimes be very irreverent. Not reverent, but irreverent. And so we need to rightly discern the meaning of what God is trying to say to us. And today, of course, we're discussing worship, but I'm just, I'll, I'll get to that point. And I remember one person came to Bible college, one of our professors came to teach, and he said, you know, see this book, it's just a book, and he flung the Bible on the, on the floor. That is irreverence. How do I know? You know, when God wrote, there was no printing in that day, so God wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger on stone. And where did they keep it? In the most holy place. In the holy of holies. Why? Because it belonged to God. It was his word. So yes, I, on the other side also, I've seen people take Bibles and thumb people on the head to drive out demonic, so-called demonic spirits. That's another extreme. So we must rightly discern what the Bible says. So when the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, it means if we learn to reverence God, that's a wise move. Because from that wise move will come many good things. Because that's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be given unto you. So today the Bible says God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
All of us were created to worship something. If you say the atheists don't worship anything, you're wrong. Take for example communism. They didn't believe in God. But they built statues to their heroes. And they would salute those statues and garland those statues and, and do all sorts with those statues. Light it up and, and decorate it and put flowers around and make parks around it. Why? Because they reverenced that those heroes that they considered to be heroes. So there was reverence. So in the same way, worship is not singing. It's an attitude of the heart that is expressed by our actions. That's what worship is. Sometimes you ask people, what is worship? They'll say, praise is the fast songs and worship is the slow songs. You just failed your test. That's not what worship is. There are many people who sing. That's, you, a person can sing and heart, his heart can be far away from God. Singing is not worship. It's one aspect of our expression of love to God. You know, what are the songs that are most written in the world today? Love songs. Poetic songs. All about love. Right? And so, we, when we say we are worshipping God, it does not mean singing. I mean, look at what the Bible says. We must worship Him with a brass band. <clears throat> no. It says, God is looking for people who are worshippers. And how do they worship Him? In spirit and in truth. That is worship. When we speak the truth, that is worship to God. Why? Because we are giving Him the highest priority in our life. You know, in the Bible, when Jesus walked the earth, there were many, like a Roman centurion and, and many others, who, who heard about Jesus. They were not, they were not Jews. They, some of them were Romans. But they sent word to Jesus. They said, he's a good man and a worshipper of God. Doesn't mean he was singing to God. No, no, no. He honored and worshipped God by living the word in his life. So when God says he's looking for worshippers, he's looking for those who would live the word in their life. So all of us were created with that empty space. Everyone worships something whether you like it or not. If you're wondering whether teenagers worship anything, yes they do. Look at all the posters of the rock stars and football stars and, and F1 drivers in their bedroom. Worship is something that gets our attention above everything else. That's what worship is. Sometimes you refer to a person who says they worship money. And we've seen that, isn't it? We've seen those who are related to Scrooge. They are so stingy, if they, don't, if they have to give you 5 rupees and they don't have 2 5 rupee coins, they'll take a 10 rupee note and cut it in half and give it to you. So when we look at people like that, we say they worship money. That means their relationships don't matter, their behavior doesn't matter. Only thing that, listen, I'm not worried whether you can give me back my 5 bucks or not. You just return my 5 bucks. Doesn't matter about they have considered their money more important than their relationship, their friendship, or anything else. Now, when we don't have time for God, we have ceased to worship Him. But the one thing that God held against Israel was this. You have forgotten me. You know, sometimes... When you talk about two people in love, you, they'll say, he worships the ground on which he walks. What does that mean? Every thought that they have towards each other, that they, every thought of theirs is towards each other. It's the same with God. That's why God commands us to be in love with him. He says, thou shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. God is so much in love with you and me. He says, I want you to be in love 
with me just as well. So when somebody's not good to me and I think I ought to be treated better than that and I have a chance to retaliate, I say, no, I won't. Because God is more important to me than you. I will behave in the way His word commands me. That is truth. And that's what sets people free. So let's please get this mind out, you know, I got to, and I'll tell you why we gather to worship in church. In case you're wondering, then why do we gather to sing? I'll tell you why. Because when you and I sing to God, it's the only time in the body of Christ when we are not arguing, fighting with one another, we've all together got God on our mind. That's why. That's why, think about this. The disciples were fighting with, Jesus, with each other before Jesus could go to the cross. One said, Lord, when you get to heaven, you think there was no politics among the twelve? There was. You think there's no politics in church? That's why in the Bible there is no voting. There's no voting. Let's vote who the next pastor is. Let's vote who the next music leader is. Let's vote who the next usher is. There's no voting. God designs, designates and speaks and says this one. So they were fighting with one another. And what happened at the cross? They ran for their lives. But do you know something? after Jesus rose from the dead. These same people who ran away, who were afraid, same people who politicized their relationship with each other, who had a lust for power, they gathered in the upper room. And when they were one accord, the Holy Spirit was poured forth upon. Not because they prayed for four days in tongues. Why? God is looking for those who would worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's the truth. When we are united and one, listen to me, that's why it's important for us to come and worship together. Because it's the one time where as the body of Christ, we're all united. It's the one time when we're all, nobody, now I'm sure if you ask somebody, if I ask the congregation today, what's our next song? It will sound like Babel. Because there will be a hundred different suggestions as to what songs we should sing. One would say, let's sing a fast song. Another sing, let's sing a slow song. One would say, no, last week we sang that song, so we can't sing it. Some will say, uh, why don't we just do a cappella? There would be a lot of trouble. Just coming to a conclusion. But when we worship, there's a unity wherever two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in your midst. And that's why when we come into worship and together corporately worship God, God can move in our midst. You can get healed without a personality being involved. You know why? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And how does that liberty come? Where there's unity. The true meaning of worship has been blurred either by our culture or by religion. Psalm 40 and verses 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. 
And now listen to this. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. So what God is saying is, if we are true worshippers, we learn to prioritize God first in our life, no matter what circumstances we are. Because here was the psalmist, he says, I cried out unto God. Why would he cry out unto God? Because he was in trouble, he was in difficulty. He said, I cried. He didn't complain. He didn't grumble. He didn't gossip. He said, he went to the right person. He went to God himself. And he said, God, I'm in trouble, Lord. Lord, I'm, I'm weighed down by burdens. That's why Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Tur take my yoke and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What does that mean? Have you and I seen oxen taking yoke in a field? There are always two oxen to make the load easy. And what's God saying? Through the struggles and battles of life, come to me. Come to me. Don't go to anybody. Come directly to me. Come unto me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke. So God says, the burden of life. I'll show you how to bear it. Because I've been through life. That's what Jesus is saying. And he says, on one side is, is the yoke and on the other side are you. Together you will learn that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's what David did. He cried out and he says, and God heard my cry. And he says, he brought me up out of a horrible pit. He was in the pit. Sometimes when you talk to it, not, uh, I mean, Conversations really haven't changed much over the centuries, have they? Sometimes you ask somebody, how are you doing? And they say, it's the pits for me. David said that. He said, and he has brought me out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock. And you know, and established my goings. And listen to what he says. And God has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto... So he said, because I went to God and I was worshipping God. This is an act of worship. He first goes to God. Now, the song comes. And he says, many shall see it. What does that mean? I mean, normally a song, you hear it, don't you? But he says, he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, and many shall see it. And what's the next word? And fear. Fear. And what's the next word? And trust. For a song, he wasn't talking about this is the day that the Lord has made, song, chorus. He was saying, God put an attitude in my heart that made me sing. And because of that, people could see how my life changed because I was a worshipper of God in my miry clay, in my horrible pit. I put God first in my life. And now people can see and fear. Because they've seen how God has changed my life, what does the word fear mean? The word fear mean? Reverence. And they too will say, wow, God has done this for you. I too want to have that kind of reverence for God. And it says, and then they will trust in the Lord. You see how we are being witnesses for God by being worshippers? Because of that song, many will trust in the Lord. The first point, why worship? When God helps and saves His people, you cannot but sing and be happy and be grateful. Because of what the Lord has done in our life. We ought to be a happy people. Yes, I always say this. We ought to be a happy people. Because God has put a song in our mouth. David sang because the Lord delivered him out of the horribly, horrible pit in miry clay. There's coming a day when so sermons 
will no longer be preached and where no prayer meetings will be necessary but when that day comes there is still one thing that will continue into eternity and that will be worship and it's not singing worship means God will be foremost in our lives so when we're walking in heaven none of us will fight with one another and say you took my seat on Sunday you know why God is so real to me that for me if you take my seat on Sunday it doesn't matter what matters I've come to church because of Jesus amen because of him I've come to this place the simplest way to discern the difference between praise and worship is like this we praise God for what he has done and we worship him for who he is amen you know I tell you something personally speaking many times in my life when I serve my meal I'm so grateful so grateful say God this meal that you have given to me I don't take it for granted because I know over the years of ministry I've seen people hungry of course we've reached out to them but I realize how grateful we need to be for what we have in our lives and that gratitude must always go back to God that is worship when you're walking down a street and you see the weather and you look at the beautiful flowers even though it's hot in Bangalore today have you seen those pink flowers all over town it's beautiful so when we look at it and we say God you stand in awe in the scorching heat those flowers that are alive and like lace they don't wither until their time is done for days and weeks they make Bangalore city look so beautiful so when you say God wow that's something you did father that's worship because it all comes back to Jesus that's what worship is it all comes back to him why didn't you give them back nicely no for me it all comes back to Jesus but they hurt you it's okay it all comes back to Jesus you know why they hurt him but he opened not his mouth that is worship some people think that if they sing a few songs they're fine with God it's possible to sing all the songs in the hymn book and be totally out of place with God possible so in our everyday life if we don't put God first we're not true worshippers he should be foremost in our lives if you worship on Monday and it's not the way that you did it on Sunday you may not have been worshipping A.W. Tozer said this go to church once a week and nobody pays attention worship God seven days a week and you become strange so people say you went to church on Sunday how come you're spending so many hours in prayer now reading your Bible and because you're worshiping God how come you're going for the prayer meeting how was so many meetings in a week yes because what fascinates me more than anything that this world can give is what God has for me is who he is he's my attraction that's why I go worship doesn't happen when the worship team gets on stage but it happens when we focus on Jesus amen that's why you know who was the greatest prophet in the Old Testament anybody I'm sure we know this easy one who is the greatest prophet in the Old Testament Pardon? Elijah? Who is the greatest prophet in the Bible? 
Okay, if I'm having Bible study this week, <clears throat> and the subject will be prophets. <laughs> you know who Jesus said was the greatest prophet in the Bible? John the Baptist. But Jesus said, those who are least in the kingdom of God are greater than John the Baptist. Notice this. John the Baptist didn't do any miracles. He didn't part the Red Sea like Moses. He didn't call fire down from heaven like Elijah. He didn't survive in the whale like Jonah. All that he said was this one thing. Now this is what a true worshipper is. This is what a worshipper is. You know what John the Baptist said? He must increase, but I must decrease. That is worship. That is worship. Worship and praise is vocalizing compliments to God. St. Augustine said this, a Christian should be a hallelujah from head to toe. In other words, their attitude should always be one of, I'm not going to grumble, I'm not going to complain, because God is with me. I'm not going to curse. You know, human nature is such, it gets hot and we say, we wish winter will come. It gets cold and we say, I long for summer. Are we ever satisfied? Never. Worship means it's being so preoccupied with God that we have to say something about who He is and what He's done for us. When any relationship is verbal, you know that relationship is a good one. When our relationship with God is good, then we're very verbal and vocal about Him and with Him. Just because we sang, it does not mean we have worshipped God. Worship must come from the heart. Notice when... Uh, when, when John the Baptist said this. He said, he must increase, but I must decrease. It was his attitude. It was not what he did. Of course, what he did came later. But the higher priority was what he was on the inside. It's possible to sleep or meditate with our mouth closed, but we cannot praise him with our mouth closed. Praise is always vocal. It's always expressed with words. And isn't that true of love too? It's true of actions as well as words. The second point. Praise has gone awry, or in other words, gone astray. Worship has gone awry today because we have focused on the wrong things. We've missed the mark. Praise has missed the mark of what biblical praise should be. We have focused on what's going on. Stage lights. Smoke machines. Now, I don't, I understand uh, smoke machines in discos, but smoke machines in church? Uh, okay. <clears throat> good sound. All of this is good to facilitate worship. But we mustn't lose sight of why we've gathered there. You know, sometimes we say, Who's preaching this Sunday? I'm going to church. And if it's somebody else, no, I'm not going. Guess who you're worshipping? <clears throat> One minute. Now I can tell you. <clears throat> you're worshipping the preacher. Yes. Who's leading in praise and worship? Oh, I'll watch from home. <clears throat> Nothing else to say. <clears throat> it's possible to have all these gadgets and, and, and uh, gizmos and just be spectators and not worshippers. As a congregation, you are not here for me. Amen? You can say amen. You're not here for me. You're here for Jesus. And no matter who the preacher is, we humbly gather at the foot of the cross 
at the feet of Jesus because his word can even come through a donkey yes in the Bible a donkey told a man gave a man advice so you and I are gathered here because of Jesus as a congregation it's not the music the pastor or the choir the musicians you are here to worship the living God and that is to glorify Jesus we must bring praise and worship to what the Bible says it needs to be when Jesus is not worshipped for who he is and exalted then we have to resort to gimmicks to stir ourselves up I've been in places where I've heard people say okay let's all bow our heads now somebody's crying at the back then everyone starts crying no music is good but it's not to be used to play with our emotions so that we can say ah we worship God when Jesus is not worshipped and exalted that's what we do we must listen to the source to God himself Psalm 22 and verse 25 my prayer shall be of thee in the great congregation I will pay my vows before them that reverence him that fear him true praise has been lost because my praise shall be of thee it's been replaced by other things by personalities by gizmos equipment lighting and all of this the words of, of, of one of the choruses that we often sing is this I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus that is the heart of worship you and I don't need a good day or a good song to praise God we just need a good God amen that is reason enough for us to rise up and to worship have you ever tried praising God in your dark hour you should try it it's not exhilarating as when things are going well in that dark hour when you start to worship God say God I don't understand but I bless your name worship you I don't know what to say I don't know how to explain my situation but I worship you I worship you Lord that is true praise that is true worship because above the horrible pit and the miry clay when we look to him he lifts us out and puts us on a solid rock and it puts a song in our hearts and people won't hear it they'll see it they'll see it so if I if if if, if I don't have XYZ I'm fine I'm happy if I could afford only one meal today I bless this and I break bread with you my father I break bread with you my Lord that's enough it makes me happy doesn't matter if I couldn't afford my other two meals I break this bread with you I have you Jesus you know it's amazing sometimes we think I need strength for this I need strength for that you'll get the strength when you have the situation that needs the strength not before that the Red Sea did not part miles before they reached it it parted only when they reached it you know when I was going through my heart procedure and I had four stents put in 80% blockages I was lying on that operating table but I want to say to you I had zero fear zero fear and the doctor said we need to put in four stents should we do it now or later I said doc you've already opened me up so go ahead do it and I said to Sandy when she said do you want to do it I said yes I said you know one thing there's a total lack of fear total absolute zero fear that is the grace of God when you need it they put a song in your in your heart fascinating I was in awe of God 
You know why? I'm not worried. If God wants to take me home, I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready. Not afraid. Not afraid. That's what the presence of God does in our lives. To put Him above everything else. There's no fear. There's no pain. There's no sorrow. It's all about Him. We're so into Him. So into Him. So we don't need a good day or a good song to praise God. We just need a good God. That's reason enough for us to worship Him. When you truly understand how, the, how good the Lord is, then worship will flow from a grateful heart, not just on Sunday morning. When you go through traffic, you say, Lord, thank you that I came through safely. When you get into the office, even though it's tough, say, Lord, at least I have a job. I worship you, Lord, because always my mind is on you, my Father. Psalm 48, 1 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. If God is great, then my praise must be great towards Him. And it's not only when I'm up on a stage or people are watching me, but even in every day, mundane life, I sit down with a newspaper, blessing, have a nice cup of chai, blessing, on a hot day to sit under a fan. Thank you, Lord. Worship. I'm remembering Him in all that I do. That's what the Bible says. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. My praise must match who He is. Which means who He is determines how I praise. How I feel doesn't determine my praise. God's greatness should determine our praise, not our personality. I'll tell you why. Many times we make excuses as to why we don't follow the biblical pattern for worship. We say things like, I don't come from a background where we used to clap our hands. But you know what the Bible says? Clap your hands when we worship God. In song, that is. It also says, shout. Or we say, we make excuses. No, when I grew up, we never, we never moved. We, in worship, we played that game called statue. You remember when we were young? What was the words we used to use? Statue. And you turn around and everyone is like a statue. Many in church are like that. They play statue. In case you're wondering... Whether we need to clap hands and raise our hands, I say yes. You don't realize what it does, but I'll tell you what it does. Something spiritual happens. Israel was fighting with their enemies and Moses was up there praying. When he got tired, he, he, which means he was praying with his hands. Up. When his hands got tired, he put it down. And Israel started to lose. But when he... Aaron and her finally stood on either side to hold up his hands and Israel started to win. We don't understand. But if the Bible says it, then I'll do it because Jesus is above everything for me in my life. No, we don't. When I grew up, we only sang hymns. Good. Now that you've grown up, learn to sing choruses. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord. Amen. Sing praises to His name. It even says dance. Let's be expressive towards God. Let's be expressive towards Him. If the Bible says we must shout to the Lord, then we must shout. It's not a Pentecostal thing. It is a Bible thing for us to shout unto the Lord. Amen? No denomination can lay claim to the biblical pattern for worship. True praise doesn't find its source in music, but it finds its source in God. It's not great music, but a great God that causes me to praise Him. 
And Psalm 22 is how David felt at his lowest time in his life. It is this psalm, in this, this psalm that Jesus quoted on the cross. When David was at his lowest point, when Jesus was at his lowest point in his life, both of them quoted this psalm. Look with me in Psalm 22 and verses 1 to 2. Psalm 22 verses 1 to 2. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, I'm not silent. This is the heart cry of a heart in distress. Both David and Jesus, were. this was at the lowest point in their lives. But then something magnificent happens. Look at how their situation changes. Look with me in verse 3. Same psalm. Psalm 22. He's saying, I'm crying out to you night and day. You don't hear me. I'm not silent. I'm not staying. I'm praying and nothing's happening. Why have you forsaken me? All of this. Now you look at, at, at verse 3. But what does it change to? But thou art holy. In other words, worship. We worship God for who? He is. We praise Him for what He's done. So you know what David and Jesus did? They worship God in the hardest part of their lives. Are you in a dark spot in your life today? Give Him praise. Worship Him. Give Him attention in your life. Put Him first. Say, Lord, I don't understand. But this is how I am going to be. According to your word. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praise of your people, of Israel. So, we see praise and worship in this verse. Why has you forsaken me? Night and day I cry out unto you. But thou art holy, you inhabit, thou art holy. So, he worships God. And then, thou that inhabits the praises of your people when he worships God the song comes into his life David was saying that this was a pronouncement of of who God is regardless of what he was going through that's what David was saying I'm going through all of this but I know who you are you are holy Lord our changing circumstances don't change who God is he remains the same yesterday today and forever. And that's why in the book of Malachi, God says, I am the Lord, I change not. So in verse 3, it says, God inhabits the praises of His people. The praise that goes up when your life is going down is a different kind of praise than Sunday morning praise. Right? And God takes notice of it. I'll repeat that. The praise that goes up when your life is going down is a different kind of praise and God takes note of it. God notices it. Because it's easy to praise God when everything, to worship God when everything is going well. But when we worship God for who He is in our tough circumstances, like David, like Jesus, and we say, Father, why have you forsaken me? I don't understand. But I know you're there. I know you're there, Lord. I love you, Lord. My mind can't work it out. My mind can't figure it out. But I thank you that you're there for me. I love you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. That's worship. That's acknowledging who he is. That's praise. I'm not singing a song. But my praise is verbal. I'm telling him, God, you're so beautiful, Lord. Thank you for the gift of life. As I said, it doesn't take much to be happy. You know what makes me really happy? A nice cup of tea. Or coffee. Sitting out in the morning, reading the newspapers. Just uh, doesn't take much to be happy. God is saying to you today, if I see you praising in the midst of your most difficult times, then I know that you have truly trusted me 
as the source of your life. You know, we sing, You are my everything. You are my all. May that be true in our lives. Amen? You are my everything, both great and small. Though storm clouds darken the sky, O oh, the heavenly realm, I just keep trusting my God, He will never fail. May we be like that. If you're going through your tough times, sing that song to God. I'll just keep trusting you, my Lord. And God will carry you through. And when you look back, you'll say, wow, look at what God has done in my life. And it would elicit more praise and more worship of God. You know what worship is? It's to stand in awe of God. That is worship. When you praise and worship in tough times, God draws close and stays for long in the midst of all of that. When we get the source of worship right, we've just been equipped to win. He must be my everything. Point number three, the weapon of worship. When we lift our voice to worship Jesus, the devil loses his voice. Amen? When we, so, and it's not only in song. As I said, in everyday life, when we stand and we say, you know, Lord, I love you. Thank you for this lovely cup of tea. Thank you for this great coffee, Lord. Lord, thank you for the weather. Lord, I can hear the birds. Beautiful, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the joy that I find as I'm preparing this sermon. Wonderful as I look at what your word reveals. Fabulous, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for that verse that I read this morning in my daily devotion. Master, it touched me so much today. Thank you, Lord. Help me live that word out in my life. That's worship. It's worship. And then you get to a point where you're so happy, you don't have words, but you sing a song that only you and God can understand. Psalm 149 and verse 6. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Now, it says praise and a sword. Why was that? Praise, just like the sword, is fighting material. When you're down and you're losing, get up and worship God and be thankful. Don't grumble, don't complain, don't ask God, where are you? And even if you do, come back to saying and worshipping God for who He is. Because then, when He puts that song in your heart, people will see that your circumstances will change because you're not complaining, but you're praising Him. Try this out. Many Christians know this, but they don't practice it in their lives. But this is the way out for us. When they, when um, Israel went to war, guess who went before the army? The choir. The choir went before the army. Why is that? Because praise is a weapon, a grateful heart, a good heart, a heart, worshipful heart is a weapon that the devil loses his voice when we raise our voice to God. The devil has no answer to a true worshipper of God. In other words, somebody who God gets all their attention with, the devil has no answer for such a person. Think of Job. The devil took everything from him. But Job was not singing. He was a worship. He always went back to God himself. You know what he said? He didn't say the devil took. He said God has given. And God, what was his... What, why, why did he say that? Because he knew God was in control of everything. He knew who God was. He knew who God was. 
He was a worshipper of God. Those who know their God, the Bible says, shall do great exploits. Through the tough times of your life, if you can let the high praises of God ring out, it soon becomes a sword that vanquishes the enemy. The purpose of praise is that God would be glorified, the saints fortified, and the devil horrified. That's the purpose of praise. And remember, it's not fast songs and slow songs, okay? Please get that out of your theology. Amen? Get that fast song, slow song thing out of your theology. That is not praise, that is not worship. It's one expression of our worship to God. Worship is the attitude, praise is the expression of that attitude. So when we come in on a Sunday and we gather in one accord, we're all singing the same song, who's on our foremost on our mind is, we've gathered in this place because of the Lord. Because worship is a, is a weapon, the enemy wants you to think that it's only for Sunday and in a building. No. While you're driving, while you're riding, while you're at work, you can give thanks to God. Say, Father, I, I thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, I thank you you're with me. That's why I said I never get bored in a long queue. I'm never bored. I can stand in a queue that's two miles long and never be bored. Because I have God with me. We've traveled all over the world together. He's always been with me. Never been alone. Never been alone. Fascinating to have his company. Satan's plot is to, say, is to take six days of praise away and keep you singing and remembering God only one day of the week. That's his plot. No, don't give him that privilege. Be grateful throughout the week. Amen? Worship God. Tell him how grateful you are. Thank him. If you have a chance to curse and swear at somebody, say, no God, I love you Lord. I don't understand. I let them be who they are. I want to be who you want me to be. Amen? Psalm 34 and verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If the church will not praise Him, then all of nature will praise Him. Luke 19, 37 to 40. Luke 19, 37 to 40. Luke 19, 37 to 40 says, As soon as he was approaching Jerusalem, near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the entire multitude of the disciples, all those who were or claimed to be his followers, began praising God, adoring him enthusiastically and joyfully with loud voices for all the miracles and works of power that they had seen, shouting, Blessed Celebrated praise, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory, glory, majesty and splendor in the highest. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples for shouting these messianic praises. Jesus replied, I tell you, if these people keep silent, the stones will rise up and praise me. Amen. God expects gratitude from his people. Amen. So we will give him praise. We will give him gratitude. We will give him thanks no matter how down in the dumps we are. No matter how much in the miry clay we are. No matter how desperate or horrible pit we are in. Because when we acknowledge God, I don't understand the situation. But you are holy God. I will worship you, Master. He puts the song in your heart. Job chapter 38. Jesus said, if these people don't worship me, the stones will sing. Now listen to Job 38 and verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God, that's the angels, shouted for joy. You know what the Bible says? The stars sing to God in the morning. Isn't that wonderful? When the morning stars sang together 
Who did they sing together with? All the angels. They worship God. The gurgling of a stream, I believe it's worshipping God. The crash of the waves upon the seashore, I believe it's resounding with how great God is. When I hear birds tweet five in the morning when you're fast asleep, I used to get irritated. And I said, these birds are a nuisance. But you know what? I no longer do that. And it's, don't look at me like that. I love birds. <laughs> But I recognize that while it's still dark and they haven't found their food as yet, they're still praising God because they know as He feeds the birds of the air, He clothes the lilies of the fields. They know who God is. Psalm 40 and verse 3 and then another verse and I'll close. Psalm 40 and verse 3. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise to our God. Many, here's that word, shall see it, not hear it, and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Now let me show you a practical example of how you can come out of your horrible pit today. Are you ready? Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 26. And at midnight, the darkest hour, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them in other words they sang loud enough to disturb the neighbors and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed when God shows up foundations shake doors open and chains fall off amen you're going through a horrible time right now? Go back to God. Worship Him. God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. I woke up this morning. Many went to sleep and never woke up. I woke up this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the means to get to church, Lord. Thank you for giving me the grace to get up and go to church, Lord. Because sometimes I've been lazy, Lord. But thank you for giving me the grace. Come back to you. It's always about you, Lord. It's always about you. The purpose of worship, in case you're wondering. Let me encapsulate all of that in one sentence. This whole sermon. The purpose of worship is the title. Here is the purpose of worship. It's to glorify God. It's to glorify. It's not to sing songs, but to glorify God. Because in the midst of my trouble, in the miry clay, in the horrible pit, you are holy, Lord. I love you, Lord. Puts a song in my, in my heart. Because I've acknowledged Him. He's my source. He's my miracle. It's no wonder the first one to see the risen Christ was the woman who didn't want anything except to know where they had laid the body of her Lord and Master. She sought Him. She was a worshipper. Seek Jesus. Seek God in our everyday life. That's who true worshippers are. Not on Sunday morning, singing a few songs. May you and I always be and sing that chorus in our life. You are my everything, Lord. You are my all. Amen? Let us bow our heads today and praise Him. As worshippers, let us praise Him today and glorify His name and call upon the name of Jesus that as we raise our voice, the voice of Satan is stilled because God's voice rings out across our lives. As we prepare for communion,
where may we be reminded that it's for true worshippers that God looks for and may this be our prayer as we partake of communion may God himself find in you and me true worshippers I'll ask the ushers to come forward as we share the bread and the grape juice Come, let us pray. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also the Lord took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus, Lord, Master, Saviour, through your example, we see that in the darkest hour of your night, you knew who your Father was. You gave Him thanks before your betrayal and death. And today we give you thanks because we know that you are in control of our lives. 
Thank you that you put a song in our hearts and people will see and glorify your name, Lord. Thank you that you gave your life for us. You're looking for worshippers. Father, may you find us to be true worshippers. In Jesus' precious and holy name I pray. Amen and amen. Let us partake together. Let's rise to our feet as we close in the benediction. Let us pray. Now may the Lord our God bless you and keep you. The Lord make his holy face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord our God lift up his holy countenance upon you and give you his peace. Now may the love of God our Father and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be with us now in the coming week and for always I pray in his name that is above every other name in Jesus precious and holy name I pray amen and amen God bless you have a wonderful week